Hey guys, this is going to be another quick Linux command video. Check the link in the description for more info and for copy and paste examples. All right, the Linux strings command can be used to view strings in a binary file. So it'll view any strings in a file and it's generally used for binary files where you have a bunch of binary data like an executable or a library, but you wanna see what plain text strings are in that file. It can be used for debugging and stuff like that. So any case, um, to show all the strings in a binary file, you could do something like this, say strings, and you say bin ls. So in this case, we're using the ls command. There's a binary for the ls command called bin ls. So <clears throat> we're, we're gonna check all the strings in that file. So there we go. We have a, gives you a list of all the strings it found inside that file. So um, if, you, if you wanna just check, um, I'm gonna show you this real quick. So say file bin ls. So you can see that's an ELF 64-bit um, executable. So it's a, it's a Linux executable. So uh, yeah, that's why we picked that as an example. The other one we're gonna do is also the PWD command, the binary for that command. We're going to be using that as an example too. So you can say, you, you could check two if you want. Um, you, you could say, um, you, you could say strings um, bin ls or and bin pwd and check all the strings in both of those. And if you use a dash f, it will show you the name of the file before each string. So that's useful. You can tell which of these files that you were, um, <clears throat> that you found the string in. And you might grep for certain strings and that would be another reason why it's useful to, spec to have that file name printed out there. Even though there's a ton of strings in here, um, yeah, it's, it's still helpful if you're investigating something, especially if you're grepping for things. So in any case, those are all the strings in both of those files. Now you can also, you can also specify a dash T X. This is the other thing I wanted to show you. So this will show you file offsets in hex. So yeah, hex, this is the offset in the file. So at this offset or that offset, you're gonna find these specific strings. So um, let's see, what else do we wanna cover? You can also specify things like, um, you can say dash E and S. So the dash, dash E will let you specify a different encoding. If you wanna see a table of all the different encodings you can choose, you know, either check the man page or check the link in the description for this command. Um, I have a list of all the encodings you could choose from, um, you know, in the document that's linked in the description of this video. And I have some other options that you could use with this command as well. Some of the more common options, they're also in that document. So anyways, strings dash E S. Um, now notice the output here is almost identical, except you have a few not so printable characters down here that were, that were added. Now, if you have something that you think might have strings in it and they're not being displayed by default, you can just change the encoding if you think they're encoded in you know 32 bit or 8 bit, 7 bit, 16 bit, whatever they are. You can specify that like little endian, big endian, all that stuff. So um, that might be useful to you if you're investigating something in specific and you don't know the character encoding. It'll it'll help you find more strings that you otherwise might not be able to find. So um, let's see what else should I show you. Um, you might only want to uh, print out strings of a minimum length. Like see, some of these might be really short and you don't care about them. So when you're running strings, you might say, um, let's see, dash, let's see here, only print, only print, print the file name. And all right, minimum length would be a dash N and you could say five, for example. So this one, this string was four characters. We're, we're gonna exclude that one. So minimum length of five. Now you might say maybe a minimum length of 10. That's gonna narrow it down even more. You're only gonna have longer strings, but maybe you're not interested in just like variable names for debugging purposes. Maybe you're looking for like documentation or longer strings like licenses and stuff. You might, you might give it something like this. You might say 50. So only strings that are at least 50 in length. Now we're finding like useful documentation and paragraphs and sentences that actually tell you stuff about it instead of having your output littered with just variable names and stuff like that. So that gives you some nice output like that if that's what you're looking for. You might wanna, you might not want that if you're just looking for variable names to debug something or something like that. But uh, in any case, that is something that you can do. So 
that's about everything I wanted to cover for the strings command. There, there is more that you can, there is more, there are a whole lot more options, but they're less common and they're, they're more like, um, they're, they're not things where you'd want to cover each one of them. So if you, if you want to cover them, you'd really want to look, you, you'd really just want to use a reference and look up the specific option you want to specify. Um, do check the link in the description, you know, for that document where I have some of the more common options. And if you want some of the more obscure ones, check the man page or the info page. Remember, check the links in the description for more info. Hit the subscribe button for more useful content like this. We also have a ton of other more interesting content covering things like coding, hardware, software, servers, Raspberry Pis, 3D printing, and a whole lot more. Hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on that next video.